Okay, let's give it a whirl. Where it's got our cross keys, and uh, we'll do a slow turn to figure out where the airport is. Okay, so if the airport is back that way, that means that into the wind is this direction. However, when you first get open, I don't recommend pointing straight up the wind line because the aircraft is probably dropping other jumpers. So what you can do is, rather than flying straight up the wind line like this, where you're facing away from the target, I suggest facing on a bit of an angle. Uh, I made a video talking about this and a lot of other stuff um, called Aircraft Procedures and Spotting. Very, very helpful video. Um, so if you head back towards the drop zone, you'll notice you're moving quite fast on a day like today when the winds are about 14, 15 miles an hour. And now I'm gonna turn sideways to the wind line Presumably everybody's open by now and I'm sliding to my right, but if I hold brakes My side slide is more pronounced uh, Okay, so that gives me an idea roughly of what the wind is doing and then if I face into the wind I right, notice I'm staying way up into the target. I can see I'm not really moving very fast and I'm going to slowly add brakes looking down and at some point I stop moving. Right about here, I'm not moving. And if I lift my hands, I'll start to move. So this is a nice way to figure out how windy it is because if you hold uh, the brakes at, at, let's say, half brakes and you're not moving, it's medium wind. If you hold the brakes in quarter brake position and you're not moving, that means it's lighter wind. Oh, sorry, stronger wind. And if you hold very deep brakes, and you just begin to stop moving, then it's lower wind. So this is sort of medium wind, and I can kind of play around, but given that I'm still at 3,000 feet, I'm going to stay on this side of the target. Um, for those of you on student parachutes, you've probably noticed that going past the target is a bad idea, even when the winds are relatively light, facing into the wind you've got pretty lousy glide ratio. So if you pass the target, this is what you're dealing with. It's very slow speed. So I'm gonna turn on two other functions, very useful functions. If I look straight down, I can see where I'm moving. And right now I'm moving more or less straight ahead. I'm into the wind. I'll slowly add the brakes and you see that arrow turning around because now I'm backing up. So this is what I was talking about before. Now that green laser beam with the dot, that is where I would land if I didn't do anything. So right now I'm going backwards. So I'll lift my hands a little bit. There we go. And now I can see that I'm actually making progress with my hands all the way up. So a very useful tool here. So let's uh, get a little bit closer to the target. Looking for traffic, always looking for traffic. I'm going to do a left hand pattern. So I'm going to <clears throat> fly a full box pattern with a little bit of drift involved. We'll see what I mean in that, with that in just a moment. So it, remember, it is a little bit windy, so I need to be at 1200 feet directly upwind of the target. I'm going to turn into the wind as I make this turn. Again, into the wind more or less. And about 1,200 feet is where I want to be directly upwind of the target. So 1,200 feet. So if there was no wind, I would cross my final approach runway, if you will. Think of it as a runway. Um, I would cross that directly over the target on a no wind day. So right now I'm crabbing, but my pattern across the ground is actually perpendicular to my final approach, perpendicular to the runway. So I've established the correct amount of offset right now. Now it's possible that I'm gonna go too far on this leg. So if that's the case, if it looks like I'm gonna go too far, I might go to the outside of the pattern. In this case, I'm looking pretty good. So I'm starting my turn a wee bit on the early side because I have to turn more than 90 degrees. And having jumped at cross keys many times myself, I know roughly where I should line myself up. And since I have a little bit of wind and I don't have any traffic, uh, I'm gonna wait till I'm about 300 feet 
I'm gonna rotate in and I'm a little bit close to the target, I think. So I'm gonna hold a little bit of brakes. Okay, so now that looks good. So I'm gonna let it back up, let it fly. And feet and knees together, staying forward. Feet and knees are sort of, you know, underneath my body, looking towards the target, getting ready to flare. I'm gonna keep looking forward as I flare, breathing. Flaring, leaning forward, sweeping my feet back, and then PLFing or standing up as is necessary. Pretty good, right? So um, let's let's go and do another jump. But first, I'm going to show my flight path. This is a pretty cool function. So you can see where I went at different altitudes. I'm going to zoom in a little tighter. And as we get down to pattern altitude, you can see my full pattern. Going across the wind line, turning at 900 feet to the downwind leg, turning here, and I angled it away just a little bit and maybe a little too much because if you remember, I came up just shy of the target. Um, so I guess I overcompensated, didn't I? So let's let's do this again. And I'm gonna try to program in about the same conditions setting winds okay so i'm going to program in exactly because it's still in there um, and set the entry point out there same place and we'll do another jump and see if we can get a little closer to the target not that anybody would complain about being 70 feet from the target all right so i open up i check my canopy and as i'm doing it i'm going to fly off the wind line but also angle it up the wind line a little bit. So I'm holding my position, all right? Stay away from the meat bombs. Now there's a lot to talk about with, with flying in wind. Um, so of course, staying upwind of the target, not flying in a run for too long is always wise. Um, because in a run, when you have a tailwind, you can always apply brakes and although you're slowing your descent rate and your ground speed, you are floating a way longer, which means you're gonna go much, much further. So I'm gonna bring it around into the wind, more or less. All right, okay. So again, facing into the wind, I'm holding my position. And sometimes people think, well, okay, if I'm holding my position and I'm in full flight. It's pretty windy, right? So they think, oh, I got to get down there. So they spiral to get down below the upper winds. Problem is that every time I spiral, I go downwind a little bit every time. So into the wind slow, with the wind fast. Into the wind slow, with... So I'm actually spiraling downwind. The wind is blowing me uh, downwind at about the speed of the wind uh, when I'm spiraling like that. So I do not recommend spiraling to uh, to deal with high winds i think the best thing you can do is get small face into the wind and in some circumstances you can add a little bit of rear risers but not much because there's wind right so if i slow down the canopy too much i'm going to reduce my ground speed and possibly go backwards um, another thing you can do if you if you need to penetrate into the wind uh, in addition to getting small uh, sometimes is add a little bit of front risers but that's only for, um, well, first of all, parachutes that you can pull the front risers. <laughs> Student canopies, you can't pull the front risers very effectively. They're really hard. But also, um, it would be for those situations where I'm not moving at all. So right now I'm simulating not moving at all by holding a lot of brakes. But imagine I'm just stopped in full flight and I want to make it forward across the ground. I could front riser a little bit. If I front riser too much, I end up reducing my ground speed right, because I'm basically because uh, I'm diving at the ground so my airspeed vector is not facing the wind speed vector um, right, so where you're flying is very significant All right, so I'm 1400 1350 I'm gonna do a 180 here back across the wind line and I'm a little bit off, but not much. It's still totally fine. And I'm going to learn the lesson from the last one. I'm going to not go quite as far away from the target as I did last time. 
So 900 feet, starting my downwind run. Aware that sometimes the ground wind, the ground winds are so strong that that if you uh, fly downwind for too long, you're going to go too far. So if that's the case, you can actually uh, turn your canopy in or out uh, away from the target or closer. Either way, it's going to shorten that distance somewhat. Braking would not be a good choice. Right, so if you add brakes on the downwind leg, that extends your distance quite a bit. So here I've got a little bit more altitude. See, I'm at 400 or so right now. So if I turn towards that target into the wind, if I look at the target, I can see if the target's rising or sinking. Right now, it looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So I'm not gonna change anything. And remember, when you're on final, relax and breathe. Notice the big picture, not just your destination. Make little corrections primarily with the harness is my recommendation. Maybe gentle rear risers, feet knees together, staying forward on that chest strap. Flare, push, 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 push all the way to the end. There we go. Wonderful pool that we put in uh, the skydive VR. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna zoom in a little tighter. All right, so notice in the top right here, um, 1100. So I was actually about a 200 feet lower than I wanted to be. And so I made this turn just a little bit earlier than I should have, I think, which is why I got to here with a little too, yeah, a little too little distance. And then I turned myself here, created a little extra distance because I was a little bit high and that brought me more or less to the target. Not a problem. Okay. So let's, let's increase the wind. Same drop zone. And I'm going to increase the ground winds to okay, how much? Let's increase it to maximum for a student. Right now, 13, pretty close to the maximum. And here I've got 22 up top, pretty windy day. I'm going to keep the spot out nice and far. And uh, get this body started. Nice windy day. All right, starting my simulation and go. Check canopy. And as you're checking your canopy, notice where you are. I'm flying off the wind line right now. That's not a bad thing, but I'm gonna angle myself up the wind line as I migrate across the wind line. Now keep in mind, if, you're, if it's really windy and you do this trick where you're going up the wind line with a little angle to get away from the jump run, um, you may have very slow ground speed if it's that windy, in which case you just have to point your parachute just like this perpendicular to the wind line so you get maximum distance away from the jump run. And then just sort of observe where you are and as you get further away from the jump run, you can angle yourself into the wind and do your winds check. All right, so what's going on here? I'm not moving. I'm at 4,100 feet. I'm gonna add some brakes, observing my ground speed it appears that i'm just slightly moving backwards but not real fast and now i lift my hands up let it fly and now i'm moving forward okay so even at 22 uh, miles per hour winds i'm still moving pretty well uh, but i'm going to stay way up here because remember, I can always run back to the drop zone in brakes, right? Let the sky carry me home um, if I'm too far away. But I could spot really far away on a day like today. And maybe we'll do a simulation like that on the next one. All right, so I'm staying on the upwind side. One of the things that I think is kind of fun is to explore the horizontal surge. So if I was to gain some speed by doing a turn and then let it off on the wind line, I surge into the wind. I get some, a little brief burst of, of ground speed. The problem is that at the end of that burst, I slow down possibly below my normal full flight speed. Um, so it's kind of an illusion that it helps. Uh, I don't think it does that much. But once in a while, I find benefit to, to doing this, sort of oscillating 
one toggle than the other, nice and smooth into the wind. For those that can't pull their front risers, um, getting some extra ground speed by gently oscillating. Notice I'm not turning off the wind line, right? This would be too much turn off the wind line because now, of course, when I'm 90 degrees to the wind line, I'm drifting with the wind at the speed of the wind, right? So the whole point here is to try facing into the wind mostly in just rocking your canopy oscillating on the roll axis and you might find that you get a little bit more distance across the ground because you're sort of always in a diving surge um, you don't want to dive real hard just a little bit so worth a try all right so at 1600 feet i'm in a great position here i'm cutting across the wind line now 1500 taking a moment Pivoting around into the wind, I've got some time to breathe and relax. Adrenaline is very significant, isn't it? Get yourself too excited, you don't fly well. You don't notice stuff. Okay, so at 1,200 feet, here I am crossing the wind line. I'm not quite as far up the wind line as I was before. And I'm also crabbing more than I was before. In other words, I'm facing almost into the wind and I'm sliding to my left perpendicular to the wind line. So I'm going to wait till I'm way down at 900 feet and turn myself downwind. Now it is entirely possible that this ground speed is so fast and that crossing line where I just did was not far enough away from the target that I'm going to find myself too far away here. So I turned early and now I'm going to turn myself into the wind closer to the target than I did before because it is windier and I'm on final approach at 490 feet that's not a problem because if I'm on a path to overshoot when there's some wind all I have to do is add some brakes and that will reduce the ground speed of the parachute and it should allow me to sort of steep in my glide angle relative to the earth. Adding brakes doesn't really change the true glide ratio of the parachute. All it does is change the relative glide. So when it's real windy, facing exactly into the wind is very important. Because if you're off the wind line, you're going to be sliding sideways like crazy when you land. It's also possible to overflare your parachute when it's that windy. All right, so if you flare all the way down when it's super windy, you might be going backwards when you land. Uh, and if that's the case, um, <laughs> then you better be good at PLFing backwards, which means you got to twist your feet, feet a little bit to one side and present the side of your body towards the backwards vector. Um, and then once you land, get off of one toggle, pull the other one down and, and, and collapse that canopy. Let it sort of spin around, face the ground, and then let off your toggles as soon as the parachute has that 180 heading with respect to the wind, and it'll just nose down into the ground and collapse. I prefer to do that with the rear riser, personally. I find that it allows the parachute to stay over my head just like it is in this simulation, and you can kite the parachute. Uh, maybe you've seen some of my videos where uh, I did a lot of kiting, uh, standing on the ground. Super, super fun. So once it's over my head, I can kite it with the rears. It'll stay up there, and then I lean forward into the wind, hammer one rear riser, turn around and collapse the parachute, let off those rear risers as soon as that nose is close to the ground, take a step forward, and you're in control of the parachute. It's awesome. All right, so let's do another one. Um, I'm gonna do instructor jump. Here, let's see, instructor jump, local jump, continue, and this time we're going to increase the wind speed a little bit more. All right, so this is a really windy situation now. And up here the winds are even stronger, so 25 knots up top, 18 knots on the ground. Really windy. Okay, and I move the spot out a little further. Okay. Here we go. Okay, and all right.
right, let's hit it. All right, scary windy day. Facing away from the target. And right now facing into the wind, I am currently going backwards. See that? Now that doesn't mean I have to use the backwards mode to return if I don't want to. I can just turn sideways to the wind line and again, I'm drifting towards the target at the speed of the wind. See that white little bug on the ground there that's showing me where I'm going to, which is actually a pretty reasonable heading. Okay, 4,300 feet. I'm going to bring it into the wind slowly and observe my direction of motion. All right, so I'm still going backwards. So given that, I'm going to continue to face into the wind. 4,000 feet. I'm going backwards, and that green dot over my shoulder is where I would land if I held that heading. So a lot of people are terrified by these circumstances, but some of us old folks that started on round parachutes in the 80s uh, are kind of accustomed to looking at the target through their armpit um, and just facing into the wind and letting things drift. Now I can expedite my backwards motion by adding, there we go, I'm adding brakes and now I'm going backwards faster. And 3,400 feet. As I get lower, the winds will get less. Now, of course, if I face this direction, you can see the target is coming up really fast and way in the distance is where I would land if I had brakes. I'll go even further. So I'm going to turn it into the wind one more time while I'm still on this side of the runway. I'm still moving backwards. But it looks like I'm moving backwards real slowly right now. So that's good. I'm almost holding my position. So if things stayed like this, I would probably just back it up to the target. Now let's try that technique of oscillating. Let's see if that works. Oscillating myself a little bit. Nope, on the simulator it doesn't work, but in the real world sometimes that works a little bit. Uh, but again, turning too much is going to increase the distance that I travel downwind. So I'm going to stay on the upwind side right now, facing into the wind. Why they drop somebody on a student canopy on a day like today, I don't know. <laughs> I shouldn't have jumped when it's this windy, but sometimes the wind gets really strong after you take off. So don't freak out about it. Just play it safe. Stay on the upwind side, 1900 feet. There's really not much I can do other than face into the wind. So can you see where I would land right now is more or less the target. And if I add some brakes, it's going to make me back up even more. All right, so now in the brakes, I'm backing up even faster. 1,600 feet. All right, so hands up in full flight. I'm still just barely holding position. As I get lower, I'm going to get a little more ground speed. I can see that I'm almost coming straight down now, maybe moving forward just slightly. I think to have these visualizing tools <clears throat> that are available in the Skydive VR Active, it's, it's wonderful. It's a really cool thing. All right, so now I'm holding, or just about holding my position at a thousand feet. So I need to get myself back to the target. If I run for even a moment, that's going to make me uh, a little too far downwind. So I'm going to turn sideways to the wind line, 800 feet. And my dog's barking, sorry about that. And watch how I bring it around like this. I never turned downwind. That was my, basically my whole pattern is that. Okay, so I'm really close to the target. There's a dog under canopy. What's up with that? It's a new malfunction. Dogs under canopy. 
<laughs> and now I'm going to bring it around into the wind. Notice I'm at 400 feet. And I'm looking down at the target because it's so darn windy. Hands are all the way up. And I'm just barely moving, but I still I managed to get myself to a safe landing point. I can't over flare today, right? Because it's so windy. So I'm going to flare and then plan on not going much past half breaks. That canopy is just me in the future there. Flare to partial. And there we go. Acceptable, safe, even though it was kind of a dangerous situation. I managed it. <laughs> Hopefully you'll never have to do that, but especially for those of you who are very lightly loaded on a student canopy, that method might come in handy for you. It has been said many times, there's those who have and those who will land off the drop zone. The ability to, to choose a good field, to the ability to fly a nice pattern into that field and set yourself down safely and softly, maybe not standing up, but safe where you can walk away afterwards. That's a complicated story. And it's a story that hasn't been told very efficiently and very effectively, and we need to tell it. So I've been working on uh, this body of information. Well, it turns out my whole life, didn't realize it. Uh, but, but putting together the, the information that's gonna help you evaluate what's beneath you when you didn't plan on being there over that baseball field, over that backyard, over that farm field, over that unknown DZ. Beware of changing that plan too low. So by about 2,000 feet, you really should have it. Not just picked out where you're gonna land, but how you're gonna fly the pattern. And if it's super tight, um, you certainly wanna make sure that you're almost kicking the trees on the, the near side of the field so you don't overshoot uh, to the other side. As a skydiver, you're gonna be in these situations where you're landing off the drop zone. You don't wanna be uh, a Pollyanna ivory tower skydiver that yeah every every time you you jump or oh, you lie land in the drop zone i always land on the target i always land on my feet well what if you don't are you ready for that so that's what this video is about dz unknown let's go to the classroom and talk about some details when i'm facing into the wind my glide is limited i'm flying steeper relative to the earth so that means that I'm fighting the wind, you can think of it that way, and any reduction in airspeed is gonna hurt me. Any steepening of glide, I mean, you know, substantially steep, steepening of glide uh, may hurt me as well. It's windy though, so I'm keeping my hands up in full flight. If I try a little bit of rear risers, that may help. A lot of rear risers, I'll lose speed, right? So what I need to think about right now is, is kind of keeping my, uh, my knees up, staying real small, uh, making sure that I don't lose any forward speed. Yeah. We weren't making much progress towards the drop zone. Multiple options. Um, I wasn't making a lot of progress across this road, but in this case, I think I made the good, the good choice. You can get surprised crossing over roads low that, oh, look, there's a power line or something. But Google Maps is cool because what you can do is find that location, right click on your mouse, and then you can measure the distances. So you can get an idea of how far from the drop zone is acceptable. We're gonna talk about spot range. Yeah, Brian. <laughs> 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 